does your plant look something like this? If it does, you probably are gonna wanna watch this video. Hello Canadian gardeners, cold climate gardeners, and gardeners of the extremes. How are you guys doing today? My name is Ashley. I'm a soil scientist by formal education with a minor in plant science. And on this channel, we apply the science to Facebook's tips and tricks, Instagram secrets, and old wives tales when it comes to gardening and house plant care. If you like the sounds of that, make sure you hit that subscribe button and join our awesome family. On today's video we are looking at sunburn plants because if that is what your plants look like that is what you have and this can happen to anyone anywhere it can happen to succulents it can happen to cactuses it can happen to tomato plants which is what i mostly see on forums so in this video we're going over exactly what happened to the plant how to prevent it for next time and if the plant is salvageable for this year still or if it's time to chuck it in the garbage so if your plant looks a little bit crispy and i will insert some photos of even my dearest friend's cactus which she burnt using a mirror in a house which is very talented by the way cheryl to do while living in saskatoon saskatchewan canada and then the other photos i am putting in are mostly tomato plants things like that that i've seen on facebook forums um that are sunburned and people are saying you're watering too much you need to miss them you need to you just gave it too much sun and that's all that's happening there so to understand exactly what is happening to the plant itself and why it looks crispy is we have to look at the cell of the plant leaf itself so if we look at the plant leaf it has a cuticle on top and then it has an epidermis and then in the middle there is a mesophyll which is technically where the photosynthesis takes place and all our chlorophyll is located and the amount of epidermis your plant has is completely dependent on the type of plant you have in your home so something like a tomato plant has less of an epidermis than something like a cactus or a succulent. That one could have multiple layers of an epidermis, so they are slightly harder to burn. Now, commonly when we see the sunburn itself, it is similar to what would happen if we as humans had a sunburn. We all know about base tans or the first burn of the year, which people commonly use to refer to working up the skin or the pigments in the skin to be able to withstand more sun. So the same thing happens with plants. If we don't work the plant up to full sun and we just throw it in full sun, we get a sunburn. Unless it's not meant to be in the sun, such as myself, a delicate ginger flower. <laughs> if you put me in full sun, regardless of if you work me up to it, I'd be a, I'd be a tomato. But if you know you have a plant that is meant to go in full sun, such as a tomato or a pepper or a cactus or a succulent, then these are the steps you need to take. What happens if we put our plant in full sun is we actually do many things, but one of which is we burn the cuticle off because the cuticle cells are not meant to withstand that level of sun yet because we haven't built up the base tan. Secondly, what happens is we actually end up drying the leaf out because the guard cells in the stomata haven't had time to regulate themselves to the temperature that you're putting them in in full sun. Therefore, the guard cells don't say shut and they don't shut and therefore water is lost from the leaves through the stomata organ. Once that water is left through the stomata, what ends up happening is the mesophyll collapses on itself and all your chlorophyll will cease to exist. So therefore you get that brown looking leaf that is no longer green because you no longer have a mesophyll layer and you no longer have chlorophyll that is able to photosynthesize. Now with all the science aside, is a plant salvageable after it has had this happen? And the answer is yes. You can salvage your plant. If it is a cactus such as Cheryl's cactus, which I will insert a photo of here, that will permanently be the decoration for that plant. It was always going to look 
a little bit suntanned and it will never disappear, but it will not kill your plants. All you have to do is simply remove the plant from where you had it and where it was receiving too much sun, give it a little bit of break in the shade and then slowly bring it back out into the sunlight through hardening off. If you do not know what hardening is off is, I suggest you check out my video on that because that will help you in more ways than one. Now, if you have a tomato plant that is looking a little bit crispy and burnt, I suggest if it's in a container, you move it into shade and then you follow the video on hardening off and apply the proper methods to hardening off your tomato plant so you don't end up with more crispy leaves. If it is planted in the ground, I suggest you use a bucket. Yes, a bucket, because that is what I use. You can use a five gallon bucket, any one will do as long as it has some sort of color to it and it isn't transparent. You place the bucket around your tomato and you give it about a week to two weeks to be able to adjust to the new temperature and the new sunlight and then you can remove your bucket and put your tomato cages back on. This is important because you can't just let it tough it out because what you're actually doing is you're going to eventually kill your tomato plant or you are going to drastically reduce your yields because you need those leads to help with photosynthesis to produce your fruit. And if your plant is more concerned with reproducing more leaves than it is with flowers, then you have a problem. Now in the future, if you're wondering how to prevent this, you need to harden off your plants. So hardening off involves a process, which you can watch a video on. I have a video there, but in summary, uh, what you're going to want to do is approximately one week before it is time to put your tomato plant or your cactus or your succulent outside You're going to want to put your plants in full shade and the great outdoors outside of your greenhouse Regardless of if you had it in a greenhouse that was in full Sun This is a necessary step after you've taken the time to do that because you are transplanting them into the great outdoors and into flower beds in many cases for tomato plants, you're going to want to put a cover or a bucket over top of it, regardless of if you hardened it off the week before. This is going to help protect it from the elements like wind, sun, heat. In many cases, you're probably thinking this is just way too much work for my plant, but it will save you a lot of concern and a lot of stress. A little bit of sunburn is okay. Your plant will be fine as long as you have some sort of a stem or some sort of a leaf still present, you are better off leaving the plant than starting over from scratch. And while I just brought up tomatoes because that is commonly what I see on forums, this goes for all plants across the board. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and let me know in the comments below if you have ever burnt a plant indoor or outdoor and how you did it love to know that. I want to thank you guys so much for your comments. There has been so many pouring in on so many of my different videos and I truly enjoy all of them. I find them all very encouraging and I love the discussions that we're having. I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye! Oh hey there! Are you still watching? Make sure to hit that subscribe button for some more awesome plant videos.